Welcome, Hydrotech of San Diego presents Hydrogen on Demand. HHO dealer Johnny Kelly, HHO installer Jeremy Dukes. What we are presenting today is an alternative energy source in motor vehicles or any other low grade fuel engine. It enhances the fuel we are currently using and wasting out of the exhaust pipe. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is known to greatly improve the combustion process. It is also one of the most abundant elements in the universe. The most common place where hydrogen can be found is in water. We create hydroxy gas or Brown's gas. What is hydroxy gas or Brown's gas? It's a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. We split water using electrolysis into a gaseous state. So why haven't we been doing this already? But wait, we have. Let's just see what we've been doing. In 1766, hydrogen was first identified as a distinct element by British scientist Henry Cavendish. After he separated hydrogen gas by reacting zinc metal with hydrochloric acid. In a demonstration to the Royal Society of London, Cavendish applied a spark to hydrogen gas yielding water. This discovery led to his later finding that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Jacques Alexander Caesar Charles and the Robert brothers launched the world's first hydrogen filled balloon in August 1783. Then, in December 1783, Charles and his co pilot, Nicholas Lewis Robert, ascended to a height of about 1,800 feet in a manned balloon. 1788, Building on the discoveries of Cavendish, French chemist Anton Avoisier gave hydrogen its name, which was derived from the Greek words hydro and genes, meaning water and born of. 1800. English scientists William Nicholson and Sir Anthony Carlyle discovered that applying electric current to water produced hydrogen and oxygen gases. This process was later termed electrolysis. In 1839, the fuel cell effect combining hydrogen and oxygen gases to produce water and an electric current was discovered by Swiss chemist Christian Frederick Schoenmein. In 1845, English scientist and judge Sir William Grove demonstrated Schoenbein's discovery on a practical scale by creating a gas battery. For his achievement, he earned the title Father of the Fuel Cell. In 1874, I believe water will one day be employed as fuel, that hydrogen and oxygen, which constitutes it, used singly or together, will furnish an inexhaustible source of heat and light, of an intensity of which coal is not capable. Jules Verne, The Mysterious Island. In 1918, Charles H. Fraser received the first patent for a hydro booster. Charles's research found that his hydro booster worked best with low grade fuels. In 1920, German engineer Rudolf Aaron converted the internal combustion engines of trucks, buses, and submarines to use hydrogen or hydrogen mixtures. In 1958, the United States formed the National Aeronautics and Space Agency. NASA's space program currently uses the most liquid hydrogen worldwide, primarily for rocket propulsion and as fuel for fuel cells. In 1935, inventor Charles H. Garrett patented an electrolytic carburetor and demonstrated a car which ran on tap water. In 1959, Francis T. Bacon of Cambridge University in England built the first practical hydrogen air fuel cell. The 5 kilowatt system powered a welding machine. He named his fuel cell design the Bacon Cell. Later that year, Harry Carl Erig, an engineer for the Alice Chalmers Manufacturing Company, demonstrated the first fuel cell vehicle, a 20 horsepower tractor. Hydrogen fuel cells, based upon Bacon's design, have been used to generate onboard electricity, heat, and water for astronauts aboard the famous Apollo spacecraft and all subsequent space shuttle missions. 1962 
William A. Rhodes was the inventor of an electrolyzer that produced the simple hydrogen-oxygen gas, which he called single-ducted gas, as his electrolyzer emitted a mixture of H2 and O2 rather than separate ducts for each gas. Four years later, U.S. patent 3,262,872 was issued titled Apparatus for the Electrolytic Production of Hydrogen and Oxygen and for the Safe Consumption Thereof. 1970, electrochemist John Omara Bakaris coined the term hydrogen economy. He later published Energy, the Solar Hydrogen Alternative, describing his envisioned hydrogen economy where cities in the United States could be supplied with solar energy. 1972, Gremlin, modified by the University of California in Los Angeles, entered the Urban Vehicle Design Competition and won first prize for the lowest tailpipe emissions. Students converted the Gremlin's internal combustion engine to run on hydrogen supplied from an onboard tank. In 1973, the OPEC oil embargo and the resulting supply shock suggested that the era of cheap petroleum had ended and that the world needed alternative fuel. Then the development of hydrogen fuel cells for conventional commercial applications began. In 1974, years after William Rhodes' patent, Yul Brown from Australia filed a patent on his design of a Brown's gas electrolyzer and spent the rest of his life trying to make Brown's gas a commercial success. In 1974 paper by the Jet Propulsion Lab of the California Institute of Technology states that the addition of hydrogen to fossil fuels burned in the internal combustion engine will increase the efficiency of that engine. This paper has been validated by the Society of Automotive Engineers. Not only does this technology improve miles per gallon, it significantly reduces emissions. In 1990, Mr. Stanley A. Meyer acquired a patent on a method for the production of an oxygen-hydrogen fuel gas. What made it special was the dielectric resident circuit. He demonstrated a dune buggy using only water as fuel. After some time, the dune buggy was purchased by Dr. Stephen Greer, who was the founder and director of the Orion Project, an organization created to transform the current energy, environmental, and social crisis into a world of sustainability and enlightened abundance. In 2003, the first electrolytic hydrogen production, compression, and fueling station was inaugurated in Reykjavik, Iceland. The refueling station is designed to be open to public services. The hydrogen delivery station is to be tested within the Project Ectos, a fuel cell bus demonstration running between 2003 and 2005. A socio-economic and environmental research methodology was established and followed for three years. In 2004, U.S. Energy Secretary Spencer Abraham announced over $350 million devoted to hydrogen research and vehicle demonstration projects, paving the way for tax rebates for individuals and corporations. Typical tax rebate assumptions for an individual. The buyer has had withheld, paid, or currently owes at least $2,000 in income taxes. The buyer drives an average of 15,000 miles per year. The buyer gets an average of 19.4 miles per gallon. The buyer pays an average of $4 per gallon of fuel. The buyer purchased and installed a 4 to 5 liters per minute hydrogen system costing $1,599 on January 1st. The buyer has registered with the IRS with Form 637 as an activity M producer and user of an alternative fuel mixture of hydrogen and petroleum. Typical results for an individual. The buyer claims a clean fuel vehicle conversion cost tax credit of the $1,599 he paid for the system using IRS Forms 8910 and Form 1040. 
the buyer claims an alternative fuel mixture production and used tax credit for $386, which is 50 cents per gasoline gallon equivalent of hydrogen on forms 4136 and 1040. The buyer claims an excise tax credit or refund of $141 for the federal excise tax paid on the petroleum portion of the fuel mixture using IRS Forms 8849. If the buyer gets a 25 to 50 percent mileage increase savings, then they can expect to see $773 to $1,546 at $4 per gallon fuel prices. Net consequences, $2,899 to $3,672 return on the $1,599 hydrogen fuel system the first year. Then $1,300 to $2,073 every year thereafter. If this individual receives no miles per gallon increase, he or she gets $2,126 in tax credits and rebates for installing this $1,599 hydrogen unit. This is a $527 net profit with no miles per gallon increase. Additionally, this buyer's vehicle oil and spark plugs will stay cleaner longer and his engine will run cooler with much lower harmful emissions. His or her engine will run better and will last longer. The maximum deduction you can claim for qualified clean fuel vehicle property with respect to any motor vehicle is one of the following. Up to $50,000 for a truck or van with a gross vehicle weight rating over 26,000 pounds or for a bus with a seating capacity of at least 20 adults. Up to $5,000 for a truck or van with a gross vehicle weight rating over 10,000 pounds but no more than 26,000 pounds. Up to $2,000 for a vehicle not included in the first two. Our mission at Hydrotech of San Diego is to provide our customers with exemplary services, lead the way to a clean environmental future, lower our consumption of foreign fossil fuels, and to continually progress our means of creating this future for ourselves and the people of the state of California. What Hydrotech has to offer. Lifetime manufacturer guaranteed hydroxy generators, 2 to 3 liters per minute and 4 to 5 liters per minute. On-demand system components. Intelligent cell controller. Custom installation. Optional components and services. Financing is also available, personal and commercial. We guarantee our installations for five years, the electronics for 30 days, and a lifetime manufacturer warranty on the HHO generators and the production of HHO. The only user maintenance required is the checking of water level and topping off when necessary. Now that you understand that this is not rocket science, what are you going to do about it?